The grid control allows you to display totals values, such as the number of records, the maximum and minimum values in a column, and so on. In this video, you'll learn how end users can add or remove totals using built-in footer menus, how to prevent them from customizing the totals you've specified, and how to predefine the grid's totals at design time or in code. Let's start with the grid control displaying simple task data. To enable total summary display and end user interaction, you need to show the view's footer. To do this, expand the view's options view property and turn on the show footer option. And run the application. Since the views footer is now visible, end users can add total summaries using footer context menus. Right click the footer under the unit price column and select count. The footer cells now show the total record count. In the count column, let's show the sum of the column values. If you right click an existing total summary cell, the add new summary menu item becomes available. Use this item to create an additional summary that calculates the maximum value in the unit price column. You can also change a function used in a footer cell. Right click the count total summary and change the summary function to min. To hide a specific total value, right click and select none in the context menu. To hide all summaries under a specific column, use the clear summary items option. If you don't want end users to change predefined summaries, go to the properties grid displaying the view settings, expand the options menu property, and disable the enable footer menu option. This disables the context menus and thus end users ability to manipulate summaries. Let's see how you can create total summaries at design time. Select the unit price column and expand its summary item property. Leave the field name property unchanged. We'll discuss its purpose later. Let's set the summary type property to sum to specify the desired aggregate function. And finally, customize the summary values text formatting by setting the display format property. And run the application to see the specified summary value already displayed in the grids footer. Now let's see how you can use the field name property that was left unchanged. Go to the properties grid displaying the unit price total summary settings and set the field name property to the order sum field. You'll see that the summary value has changed now that another field's values are used to calculate the total value. Let's return to design time and see how you can create multiple total summaries under a single column. Select the order sum column and click the ellipsis button next to the summary property. This invokes a collection editor with one summary item already in the list, but it has its summary type set to none. Change the type to max to display the maximum value in the order sum column. The display format property is automatically changed. Add two new items by clicking the add button. In the same manner, set their summary type property to min and average respectively. After that, click OK to save the changes and close the editor. And let's run the application again. The order sum columns footer displays three separate total values one under another. Finally, let's create total summaries in code. I already have the create summaries button in the ribbon control. Write the click event handler for it. The handler created two new grid column summary item objects with required summary types, field names, and display formats. After that, it adds them to the summary collection of the count column and run the application and click the Create Summaries button. As a result, the count columns footer displays the two specified totals.